Thank you for joining the Family Worship Centre's Sunday morning e-service. Good morning, Family Worship Center and friends. We welcome you to our e-service today. We're so glad that you've made the decision to join us today. God is so good. And we know that everyone is going through such a challenging time, such an unprecedented time. Yet here we are, we are still here. To God be the glory. And look at you, you got up today and you joined us for service online. I wanna encourage you today. Although we're not together physically, participate in the service. Lift your hands and worship when you feel the urgency to praise God. Shout out a praise unto God. Shout out a hallelujah and an amen when you feel the urgency to do so. Because although we are not together in person, my friends, we are still together in spirit. We love you so much. Enjoy this service today. Share it with somebody. You know, when you share this service with someone, it's like inviting them to church. So we encourage you to share the service with somebody today and enjoy. Love you so much. Good morning, church. Welcome to the Family Worship Center. We hope that you will enjoy the service as our pastor will bring the word. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are a gracious God. We acknowledge you today and we thank you, mighty God, that we are here today in mind, body and spirit. We just want to lift up your name, Father God, and to praise you in spite of the situations that surround us in the entire world today. Mighty God, we ask that you will heal the sick. Touch those who need a touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we just welcome you in our midst today. As the songwriter says, Oh, let us praise the Lord. Let us worship him. Let us give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And great is your faithfulness, mighty God. We just thank you, Father God, that you have kept us and our families safe and sound from all sickness and alarm. And mighty God, as we continue to praise you today, we ask that you will comfort us in our sorrow, mighty God. Touch the one who would bring the word. May this word not fall on deaf ears, but may the word edify us, give us strength and courage to face another day. So Lord, we just give you praise and thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Good morning, Family Worship Center and friends. We want to greet you this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are inviting you to join us on Sunday, March 7th, 2021 at 10.30 a.m. for our live worship service on Zoom. Come invite a friend. Check your emails for more information to come. God bless you. Thank you for your continued giving of your offering, seed offerings, donations, and tithe. God loves a cheerful giver, and you will be blessed when you give from your heart. You may give virtually e-transfer or PayPal. We are praying for you that God will continue to provide and move on your behalf so that his glory will manifest in your life and that you receive the desires of your heart according to his purpose. Again, thank you for giving in the offering this week. It is that time of year again when we bring our first roots into the house of God. Family Worship Center, when we release to God our first roots, we, we are asking God to release His blessings in our lives. Family Worship Center, your first roots is the first of what you receive in the year 2021. We just want to thank you in advance for your contribution to our First Roots offering. Thank you. Thank you. You can find the information on the bottom of your screen to send in your First Roots offering, or you could contact Sister Michelle via telephone. Family Worship Center. Thanks again. God bless you. Always.
There's a voice that cries out in silence Searching for a heart that will love him Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all There's a God that walks over the earth Searching for a heart that is desperate Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all He says, love me Love me with your whole heart He wants it all today Serve me Serve me with your life now He wants it all today Bow down Let go of your idols He wants it all today He wants it all today He wants it all today There's a God that walks over the earth Searching for a heart that is desperate Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all And he says, love me, love me with your whole heart He wants it all today your life now he wants it all today bow down let go of your idols he wants it all today he wants it all today he wants it all today he wants it all all of you more of you wants it all There's a voice that cries out in silence Searching for a heart that will love him Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all He wants it all Greetings to you, my father's children. This is the day that God has made. We're rejoicing and we're glad in it. I'm so glad that you have decided to join us today. For those of you who are watching for the first time, for those of you who are a part of our church, a part of our community, welcome. We're so glad that you've decided to join us today. Before we go into the word, let's have a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so kind to us. We thank you for being so wonderful to us. Lord, you have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Your light of love has shined on us. Your mercy has washed over us all night. You have kept us to this time. You've allowed us to gather in your name. And for that, we are thankful and we are grateful. I ask that you would bless those who are watching now. Bless those who are hearing now, Lord, that they will be doers of your word, that they will apply the word to their hearts, and that your word will transform Form us and lift us where you would love for us to be. Thank you again now for this opportunity to gather in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Today we are coming from Genesis chapter 39, verses 2 through 6. That's Genesis 39, verses 2 through 6. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The scripture says, because of Joseph, the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. 
with Joseph in charge, he, meaning Potiphar, did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Today, I would like to reflect on a powerful thought, on a powerful message that our founder, Bishop Joseph G. Fisher, shared with us many years ago. Many of us still hold this word and this promise close to us. He told us that FBI is looking for us. He said, FBI is looking for you. And I've come for someone today. I've come to remind you that no matter what you're going through, no matter how bleak it is, no matter how low you may feel, no matter how things may feel twisted, no matter how deceptive it may feel, God desires that you prosper. Hear me clearly when I say that God desires that you be in health. God desires that all things work together for your good. God desires that you are the head and not the tail. God does not hate you. My brother, my sister, he does not hate you, but God loves you. God desires that favor, blessings, and increase be your portion. My subject today, FBI 2.0. FBI 2.0. In the natural, FBI stands for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is the domestic intelligence and security service of the United States and its principal federal law enforcement agency. Everyone knows that whenever the FBI is involved, it's something serious. It's not it's not the local sheriff, but when the FBI is involved, it's pretty serious. The FBI doesn't play around and they will get to you one way or the other. So if you will allow me, as Bishop did many years ago, take a trip with me. Let's go on a trip. Take a trip with me and let me remind you that today FBI represents something more than a natural agency of law enforcement. Today, FBI represents that God is still trying to bless you beyond your wildest dreams. Today, FBI represents that God is still trying to make you the head and not the tail. Today, FBI represents that God is placing you above and not beneath. Today, God, FBI represents that God is still working it out for you. Oh, bless God today. Today, FBI represents that God is still opening doors for you. Today, FBI represents that there are angels on assignment to expose you to blessings, signs, wonders, and miracles. Today, FBI represents that the God, the chief of this agency, is in hot pursuit of you. He has dispatched his angels of reward to find you and arrest you with favor, blessings, and increase. Glory be to God. Let's look at the text. The Lord was with Joseph. So that he prospered. This is the Bible. And he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Favor. Favor. Now, I don't know if you spell it F-A-V-O-R or here in Canada, if you spell it F-A-V-O-U-R. They mean the same thing, but I want you to type it right now. Favor, favor. If I had points today, that's my point number one. Simply favor. I don't have a catchy anecdote. I'm not using alliteration. Today, I want to give it to you honest. I want to give it to you plain. Favor. Just say it right now from where you are. Favor, 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 favor. The Bible declares that Joseph found favor in his eyes. That means that in the eyes of his master, why did he find favor? Why? Because the Lord was with him. The wine has recorded a song many, many years ago, and they said, wherever I go, let your spirit follow me. They said, if in the desert, I'll find pleasure. If in the valley, I really don't care. I'll walk through the wilderness, shadows of blackness, but I'll never falter as long as you're there. Wherever I go, Lord, let your spirit follow me. So see, when you really look at Joseph's story and all that he has been through, God was with him all the time. I said God was with him through every step of the way. We know his story. Joseph was his father's favorite of 12, but God had another level of favor set up for him. 
His brothers hated him, but God had another level of favor set up for him. His brothers wanted to kill him, but they decided to throw him in a pit. They eventually sold him to a band of travelers and he was gone forever. Or so they thought. It doesn't matter, my friends, where you are in life. You may be low, you may be troubled, you may be out of whack, you may be out of sync. But if God has favored you among men, he will not leave you, he will not forsake you, he will make a way for you, he will move the mountains for you in a supernatural way. He will even change the hearts of those around you and he will move on your behalf. God will reverse the curse that others have tried to place on you. I know that it's a fact. I know it because he did it for me. God will cancel the assignment of the enemy that wants to destroy you. He will put you in a place that you didn't even know that even you could be in. The problems come so that you can be a place for God to show you his glory. I said our problems come to put us in a place, to put us in a position so that God can show us his mighty works, so that God can show us who he is. When Potiphar came to know Joseph, Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him and favored him. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is when the Lord has favored you, even the ones who don't serve God will be required to favor you. Oh, God, even the ones around you who tried to kill you, who don't like you, who have spoken all manner of evil against you must favor you. He worked in Potiphar's home when he thought he thought he was safe, only to realize that he would literally have to run for his own life one day. When Potiphar's wife pursued him, yet God had set him up for favor, blessings, and increase. And through all that he had been through, he didn't give up. Joseph didn't give up. Joseph didn't trust another. Joseph didn't fall victim to the deception of Mrs. Potiphar, but he trusted in the Lord with all of his heart. He kept it moving while he was in the pit. He kept it moving while he was in the palace. And later on, we find out in the story that he even kept it moving while he was in prison. So if you've been walking in a place of FBI, don't think that where you are is enough now. Don't be deceived. Although God has favored you this far, there is another level in him. There is another level that he wants to take you to. There was another level of favor that he wants to lead you to. And sometimes, listen clearly, that comes through a test. So my brother and my sister, hold fast because the test is going to come. Sometimes it comes through a trial, but God says he wants to favor you today. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Some of you, you've been walking in FBI 1.0 for years, and you thought that that was the blessing. You thought that it was enough. You thought that the miracle for that time was enough. It is no longer enough. God wants to operate in your life through FBI 2.0. That means that God wants to do it again. That means that God wants to perform another miracle in your life and not only do it again, but God wants to do it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Do it, God. Throw your weight around in my life. Have your way in my life. God, I'm ready for FBI 2.0. Lift your hands where you are now and say, God, I'm ready for FBI 2.0. Glory to God. Psalms 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. It says the Lord bestows favor and honor. Hear me clearly today. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And then it goes on to say in Proverbs 3, verses 33, The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners, he is scornful. But to the humble, he gives favor. I got to say that part again. To the humble, he gives favor. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. So my question to you is, how you living in these streets? How you living out there? What's popping? What you doing? What you got going on? How you living? 
That's my question to you. And to those who are living according to God's word, to those who are really trying to live this thing called relationship with God, not religion, but relationship with God, I pronounce and I decree that new favor is knocking on your door today. That there's a new favor. That there is a refreshing. This is a day when God is going to give you a new kind of favor. Oh God, a favor that you can't explain. A favor that you really can't even document. A favor that you can't bottle up. A favor that you can't contain. Hallelujah. Favor, blessings, and increase. Psalms 102 says, you will arise and have pity on Zion. Listen to this. It says, it is the time to favor her. Oh God, lift your hands. I'm a her today. It is time to favor her. The appointed time has come. That's Bible. I can't make this stuff up. You ought to type it right now. Favor, 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 favor. Hallelujah. Not only favor, but blessings. Like I said, I don't have anything catchy for you today. I don't have any clever, clever words and all of that. Blessings. Blessings. Type that if you believe it. Blessings. If you receive it. Blessings. If you believe in it. Blessings. Verse five says, from the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. It is God's desire that you are blessed like never before. It is God's will that you walk in blessings and not curses. It is God's will that the blessings of the Lord be given to you, be given to you in the form of good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. But the Bible declares that you must give. Uh Uh-oh. The Bible declares that you must give and it will be given to you. So for those of you, let me just stop right there. For those of you who have fallen into the mentality that you don't have to give. For those of you who have fallen into the mindset that you can get all you want without blessing the Lord. You are living beneath your privilege. I don't have time to stop and teach it today. I don't have time to stop and teach the law of giving and the law of reciprocity. But God says bring the tithe into the storehouse that there will be meat in my house. He promises that he will open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have room to receive. Perhaps you've had room to receive your blessings because you're operating on limited blessings. Perhaps you need to make a new commitment today. Perhaps you need to make a new recommitment today to continue in your giving so that you no longer live beneath your privilege. See, people don't like it when I start talking about their money. Uh Uh-huh. Don't talk about my money. But Malachi chapter three is speaking for me today. I don't care how you think it goes or where you think it goes. I don't care how you think it's used or if it's misused. When you hold back, listen to me clearly, when you hold back because of art or when you hold back because of disobedience, obedience, you hinder yourself. You don't miss the ones or you don't miss the source of where it's going. You hinder yourself. And that's Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13 says, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up (laughs) glory to God and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God. We're in the realm. We're in the realm of favor 2.0, of FBI 2.0, favor blessings and increase. That means that God is ready to bless everything that is attached to me. And when God is blessing, everything that is connected to me flows from me. Everything, all of it, it wins. That means my wallet is blessed in FBI 2.0. That means my spouse is blessed in FBI 2.0. My children are blessed in FBI 2.0. My income is blessed. My extended family is blessed. Come on, here we go. My neighbors are blessed. My co-workers are blessed. The people in the line in front of me and behind me are blessed. The doctors and the health professionals who are looking after my health are blessed. My health is blessed. My mind is blessed. My spirit is blessed. Everything attached to me is blessed in FBI 2.0. 
Second Peter chapter one, verse three, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. See, because of Joseph, Potiphar was blessed. I said because of Joseph, Potiphar was blessed. See, it was not even Potiphar's merit. It wasn't even of his own merit. But God blessed everything that was Potiphar's because of the realm of blessing that Joseph was walking in. Don't you want to live on that level, my friends? Don't you want to be so favored and so blessed that everyone around you is blessed because of your walk, because of your obedience, because of your assignment from the Lord? You ought to pursue that type of blessing. You ought to pursue that type of favor. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. You ought to commit your work to the Lord. Everything you do, everything you say, Lord, I'm committing it to you. Now establish my plans, Lord. Order my steps, Lord. Hallelujah. Help me to walk according to your will and to your purpose and your destiny for my life. Hallelujah. Blessings, 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 blessings. It's not always measured in money. Blessings can be measured in good health. Blessings can be measured in healing. Blessings, blessings can be measured in miracles. Blessings can be measured in protection from accidents, from danger seen and unseen. See, blessings can be seen in the form of protection over your home, over your family, over your loved ones as they move about. Blessings can be seen in the form of good reports, in the form of bills decreasing, rate rebates and returns increasing, grants and honorariums. You can call it forth. You have the power in you to call forth those blessings. I call forth grants and honorariums and I call forth the favor of the Lord, promotions and career shifts and entrepreneurships. I call it forth in the name of Jesus. When you find yourself, when you get lost in the things of the Lord, blessings have to follow you. FBI is taking over your life. Blessings can be seen in the form of things just simply working out. <laughs> work it, God. Work it, work it, work it out for me. Won't he work it out for you? He'll work it out for you because he worked it out for me. Deuteronomy 28 and 2 says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. I like that part. It says all these blessings shall not only just come on you. I got to do this like an illustrated sermon. I don't have time. We're not in church today. But it says not only will the blessings come on you, but the blessings will overtake you. That means the blessings will seem as if they are consuming you. You won't have room. Oh, oh God, thank you, Jesus. You won't have room to receive the blessings. It will overtake you. Watch this. But it says, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If thou will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. This is FBI 2.0. See, not only is FBI 2.0 after you for another level of favor. Not only is FBI 2.0 after you for another level of blessings. FBI 2.0 is after you for another level of, here it is, increase. That's that word again. Increase. Increase. Type that now. As we continue in Joseph's story, we realize that after Joseph was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, he was thrown in jail. He needed another level of FBI to come and rescue him. So the Lord shined on him again and granted him the ability to continue to interpret dreams. So he interpreted dreams for those in prison with him. And after the Bible says that after the chief cupbearer who was in prison with Joseph was released, he remembered that Joseph interpreted his dream. So now Pharaoh, who was troubled after he had a dream, he couldn't find anyone to interpret it. The cupbearer spoke up and said, I remember there was a man in prison who interpreted my dream and everything that he told me came to pass. See, God will use you in unfavorable places. God will use you in unfavorable situations. God will use you in the muck and the miry clay. He'll use you in the dungeon where the rats are walking around. He'll use you in the den where the lions are ready to eat you. God will use you in a dark and lowly place. He sent for Joseph. Pharaoh sent from Joseph at Joseph at the advice of the cupbearer, who again, with God's help, properly interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Genesis 41, 41 says, So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby 
put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and he put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Come on, there's the favor, the blessings and the increase. He made him ride in a chariot as his second in command and people shouted before him, make a way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. FBI 2.0 is after you today looking for you, searching for you, knocking on your door to arrest you and put you in a greater place, to put you in a bigger position, to put you in a greater realm of increase. And for those of you who don't know what increase is, increase interpreted in this context, it simply means that God wants to expand your influence. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? God wants the seams of your heart to begin to burst with his love. God wants the words that you speak about him to begin to overflow like flowing waters. Are you ready for it? God wants to expand your increase so that you will be whole like never before. God wants to expand your increase so that when you minister to that unsaved one, the Holy Ghost of God will flow from your mouth and transform a life that needs to know the Lord. God wants to expand your increase so that your entire street, your entire block, your entire corner will know that in their time of trouble, they can come to you for prayer. Because see, the truth of the matter is some of us are known in our community as the hell raiser some of us are known in our community as the all night party person some of us are known in our community as the complainer but when you begin to live for the lord and when you begin to ask him to increase to increase to give you increase he will make you the influence in your community he will make you the, the influence on your job where people who don't even believe in god will come to you in a time of trouble i know what i'm talking about fbi 2.0 is demanding that you consider your your witness before you consider your rights. What are you doing with your influence? What are you doing with your increase? Don't think that your increase is just for your benefit. God gave Joseph increase so that he could bless others. The story ends when Joseph's brothers, the ones who thought he was dead and gone forever, had to come and purchase grain from him. God put Joseph in a position, in a strategic position, a position of greater increase, a position of greater influence so that he could bless someone else's life. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, today. Many times we take advantage of the greater influ increase and we kill people with it. I said many times we take advantage of the increase, the influence, and we kill people with it. We can be so quick to forget where we came from that we forget that God has favored us immensely. Joseph, instead of killing his brothers, instead of crushing them, used his increase to forgive them and to love them. I don't care how big you may think you are. I don't care how much you think you have acquired. I don't care what your status is. You can be the bishops of bishops. You can be the CEOs of CEOs. You are still required to use what you have to make a positive impact on someone else's life. You are still required to use what you have to transform the lives of others. I don't care how big you think you are. That's a requirement. FBI 2.0 wants to expand your increase so that you will have transformational conversations that will cause the lost to, to not sleep at night because they heard you and they want to know more about the Lord. They're tossing and turning because they want to know more about the Lord. Genesis 26 and 12 says, and Isaac sold in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. He sold in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. So what are you doing so that God can expand your increase? Are you doing the same things that you did with FBI 1.0? Are you praying the same prayers? Are you approaching life the same way? FBI 2.0 is a new level, new level of favor, blessings, and increase. Listen, don't get it twisted. FBI is steeped in your purpose for this year. FBI is steeped in the year of purpose. So what is your purpose? What are you here for? Why are you here? How will you use your favor, your blessings, and your increase to glorify God? That's my question to you today. Holy Ghost, arrest our minds, arrest our will, and arrest our desire. Allow us to use the FBI that you've given us to help change the lives of others. Make us more like you, God. Walking in FBI 2.0 comes with the price. It requires 
that you remain faithful as Joseph did. It requires that you remain forgiving as Joseph did. And it requires that you remain free. That means you don't have time to let resentment and bitterness callous up around your heart. That means you don't have time to hold grudges against people. You have to remain free. That's the only way the vessel of FBI can flow through you. That's the only way the benefits of FBI can flow through you so that God can get the glory out of your life so that others can be blessed. You ought to be on a mission. You Do you realize you have a great commission to go into the highways and to compel them to come? But if, when you're too busy raising so much hell and causing confusion and being the author of confusion, which God is not, you hinder the opportunity for someone else to know the joy that you claim you have. You ought to ask God for a recommitment right now of your mind, body, and soul. Lord, do it in me over again. Lord, bless me again, Lord. I want the FBI 2.0, but I know that I have to fully surrender who I am. I have to fully surrender my will. Lord, help me to soften my words in a time of confusion. Help me to be quick to forgive when there's confusion all around me. Lord, help me and empower me to do what you've called me to do. FBI 2.0, another level of favor, blessings, and increase. Let us pray now. God, we thank you for this word today. We thank you, Lord, for your word that you sent, Lord. You desire to shower us. You desire to overtake us with favor, with blessings, and with increase. So, Lord, help us to do that which we are supposed to do, Lord. Help us to give when we're supposed to give. You commanded in your word that we give. You commanded that we give the tangible things, but you also commanded that we give patience. You commanded that we give love. You commanded, Lord, that we give mercy. You commanded, Lord, that we give understanding and compassion. Bless us now, Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray now in the name of Jesus that your spirit will fall upon them now, that they will come to understand the call that they have on their lives as believers and for the non-believer. Holy Ghost, arrest their minds now so that they can fully partake in the favor, in the blessings and the increase. Lord, thank you for this word today that comes to encourage us and to let us know that you've not forgotten about us, that you don't hate us, God, that you still love us, that you want to put us on the top, that you want us to be on the top. And God, any test that we go through, you will be with us. Thank you for the favor, for the blessings, and for the increase. FBI 2.0. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. I said to God be the glory for the things that he has done. FBI 2.0 favor, blessings, and increase. Be blessed, my father's children, until we shall meet again. Like and share this message with someone. You ought to share it with someone who you know has been down and under the weather. Share this message. I want to put a challenge on the table. Share this message right now with someone that you know is going through. If someone has called you or texted you or reached out to you this week and you know that they're going through, share this message with them. Share the message. That's the challenge that's on the table. Be blessed, my father's children. God bless you until we shall meet again. Thank you again for joining our service today. We're the Family Worship Center. Strengthening the family, building the community, and serving with love. May God bless you.